it's time for the next episode of Bucket Questions. This question, today's question is, there it is, how do blueberry maggots work? I am so glad you asked. This is the stuff that I did my master's research on, and so I am really going to geek out on this one. Be warned. In fact, I was going to do this one last week, but I hadn't finished building this slideshow yet. So, be warned. Bucket questions. Blueberry maggot. Here we go. The first thing I've got to do is discuss the term maggot. Now, when we think of maggots, what we think of are, and if you're squeamish, look away for a moment, these kind, the kind that eat dead things and uh, rot, cause rot and stank and things like that. This is a hedgehog, um, or was at one point, now it's a pile of maggots. And so that's what we usually think of, but you can look now. That's not really what the term maggot means. That's just one kind. So what maggot really means is that that is simply the larval stage of the insect known as a fly. Now, you guys are probably most familiar with larval stages in terms of butterflies. The larval stage here is the caterpillar. And so larva is just kind of the baby form of the adult insect. And so a caterpillar is a butterfly larva. This thing here is usually referred to as a grub, and it is a beetle larva. So grubs grow up into beetles. And this guy here, this is a dragonfly larva. It, well, kind of. Technically, this one isn't actually a larva. Technically, in order to be considered a larva, you have to end up having a pupa stage. And so you end up with the cocoon is the pupa, the larva, pupa, adult, caterpillar, cocoon, butterfly. Similarly with the grub, there'll be a pupal stage in here that's usually underground and we don't see them. Now dragonflies don't actually have a pupa stage, so they aren't technically a larva. The proper word for this stage is nymph, and it's just an, a baby of the adult version that looks really similar except that it doesn't have any wings. I wanted to show you dragonflies though for a moment, a little bit off topic, but that's okay because dragonfly nymphs have these super awesome scoop mouth parts, and, and they're just so awesome. I really appreciate them, so we're going to watch a really quick clip of this mouth part in action. You buy curiosity Here we strip. go. There we go. Look at that. That is beautiful. I love it. Anyway, technically not a larva. But maggots, therefore, are simply the larval stage of a fly. So it doesn't necessarily have to mean they're gross. They're all different kinds of flies. And so what we need to talk about again for a moment to really fully understand blueberry maggots is the idea of taxonomy. Now scientists love to put things into categories and the science of putting living things into categories running out of room into categories is referred to as taxonomy. So scientists have organized all life into big groups, and those big groups are called kingdoms. And anybody who has had biology class with me has seen this one before. All life on Earth is organized into six different kingdoms, um, according to science, and the one that we are looking at today is the animal kingdom. There are different characteristics that make an animal an animal as opposed to any of the other things. And the big one, let's see if I can use this pen tool, is that animals need to eat. Hey, that's not much messier than my usual handwriting. 
plants can do photosynthesis, some protists can do photosynthesis, make their own food, animals cannot. The other, th there's a few other things. Animals uh, are what's considered motile, that means they can get up and move to a more favorable environment, whereas plants and fungi are rooted. All of these guys are multicellular. Cell. All right, I'm gonna quit this pen tool soon. There we go, that's close enough. Multicellular, and the blueberry maggots are in the animal kingdom, but there's a lot of animals. And so animals are then separated into numerous other groups, and those other groups are referred to as phylum. So the next level down is kingdom. So within the animal kingdom, there are lots of different groups of animal. There's over 20 different kinds of animals um, on Earth, as well as more categories of extinct ones, but some of the phylum, or phyla, plural, include the sponges, the jellyfish, the flatworms, the roundworms, or nematodes, the earthworms, or segmented worms, mollusks, such as clams and mussels and things, and octopus and squid also fall in this category, echinoderms, which means spiny skin, so that includes sea urchins, sea stars, sand dollars, those kinds of things, arthropods, which I'm going to come back to this one, and vertebrates. Out of all of the animals on Earth, the vertebrates fit into only one of those categories. So there are way more invertebrates, different kinds of invertebrates, than there are vertebrates. That's my baby brother, by the way. So since blueberry maggots are in the arthropod phyla, that's going to be the next level of taxonomy that we look at. And there are so many arthropods. There's insects and spiders and crustaceans, such as shrimp and crabs and lobsters. There's scorpions and mites, ticks, daddy long legs, mites, centipedes, millipedes, horseshoe crabs. These guys, which um, are arachnids, but not actually spiders. Despite its name, the camel spider isn't really a spider, and there's a lot of urban legends about camel spiders that are really not true. These guys over here are some of my favorite arachnids other than spiders. They're called whip scorpions, and this one here, they're not really scorpions, but this one here is also called a vinegaroon because it, when it's scared, it can shoot vinegar out of its butt. And then this is um, a very famous extinct arthropod, which is the trilobite. And the thing that arthropods, where do I want to write this? Here, I'll write it down here. The thing that arthropods have in common is that they all have an exoskeleton. Vertebrates have an endoskeleton. Our bones are on the inside, and invertebrates have an exoskeleton. It's not really bones, it's more of a protein uh, type substance, but it's an exoskeleton. Their body support is all on the outside. And the other thing that they all have is jointed legs, and usually six or more of them. And it's this jointed legs name that the name arthropod comes from. The root word arthro means jointed, and you've probably heard that term in the term arthritis, which is swelling of the joints. And poda refers to feet or legs, and you've probably heard that term in terms of podiatrist, if anybody has any foot problems. So there's a huge diversity in the arthropod phylum. So, so far we have kingdom, animals, phylum, arthropod. And let's just com com uh, compare that to the one you guys are most familiar, which is the vertebrates, whose scientific name is Chordata. The next level down is class, and most of those different pictures that I showed you on the arthropod file are different classes, and so we're going to look at the class Insecta, which is just the insect. For Chordata, um, humans are still have their own taxonomy, and so we have our phylum as chordata, and our class is mammalia, because we are mammals. And our order for humans is primates. And insect orders, we're going to come back to that, because there's a lot of them. Uh, but the order that flies are in 
is called diptera. All flies are diptera, and I will come back to that in a moment. If we continue on with the taxonomy of humans, our family within the primates is hominid, and the genus is homo, and there are other species within homo. Our species is, as you hopefully know, homo sapiens. But there were other homo species in our evolutionary history, homo habilis, um, homo neanderthalis, things like that. So this is just an idea of how scientists classify things. And the one, like I said, that we're really going to focus on, because that's the one that blueberry maggot falls into, is diptera. So insects, there are 24 different families of insects. And there's a huge diversity in the um, insects. For example, beetles. One of the families of insects is beetles. And there are over 400,000 species just of beetles. And look how beautiful some of them are. They're amazing. And flies, which are diptera, which is the ones we're really going to get to, there's at least 150,000 species of flies, including house flies, fruit flies, crane flies. These guys are not giant mosquitoes. They're vegetarian. They're not going to hurt you. I promise. They're probably more scared of you than you are of them. There's the mosquitoes. These guys are hoverflies. A lot of them are bee mimics. These guys are horse flies, robber flies. I love these guys. They have these funky little beards. And maggot fruit flies, and this is the one that we're really on our way to get to. But before we do, I want to take a moment to appreciate how other cultures view insects. There's a lot of cultural prejudice um, in our society towards insects, but not all cultures feel that way. For the example, the Egyptians revered the scarab beetle, and this is jewelry from ancient Egypt of the scarab beetle holding up the sun, and lots of other color cu cultures have a much deeper appreciation for insects' role in the ecosystem than we do. For example, Japan. A lot of the research I had to do for a master's degree, uh, my sources came from Japan, where they have a much more positive relationship with insects in their in their culture than we do, as evidenced by all of the plethora of bug Pokemon. Look at these guys, they're so awesome. And Mothra! Mothra in the Godzilla movies. Mothra is often the savior of mankind. Mothra always fights for the humans against whichever other monster is trying to destroy the city. No matter who it is, whether it's Ghidra or Godzilla or whatever, Mothra is always on our side. And because there's a different relationship with bugs in other cultures, there's a different relationship with bugs as a food source. These are some beetle grubs. These are some other kind of stir-fried insects. And insects are a really good source of protein for a lot of cultures that do not have the land or the ability to have large farm animals the way that we do. Bugs in those cultures often serve as an excellent protein source for the people there. And if you really remember what we were just talking about, about the arthropods and how they're all really similar in having an exoskeleton and jointed legs, then if you really allow yourself to think about it, there's not a huge difference between a beetle grub and a shrimp. And there's not really a huge difference between a cricket and a lobster. And if there's not really a huge biological difference between these critters and these critters, and in our culture it is not only perfectly acceptable but considered a delicacy to eat these critters, then maybe it's a little more understandable why some cultures can ha eat these critters in place of these ones or these guys in place of these ones. That's all the time I have for today, so we'll continue with the actual point of the question about blueberry maggots next time. Thanks for watching.